1994, when South Africa was finding its feet on the edges of democracy, a young man by the name of Olga Bobabu walked into his own moment of creative freedom. Gifted with a camera by his mother as a reward for doing well at school, he parked the recreational use and unleashed the entrepreneuring him by charging subjects five rand an image. He went on to become who we know today as the originator of South African photography that captured the entertainment industry accurately and has aptly coined the nickname Oparazzi. Opa, thank you so much for joining us. This is such an opportunity to introduce the country to the man behind the lens, you know. You are known for all of the beautiful images of people that we celebrate today, um, that we see in front, but really as a behind the, the, the lens situation, we're not really attuned to who Opa the guy is, you know. So I think take us back to kind of where it all began. Uh, Okay. <laughs> so high school gi rile my high school was Golimpopo. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I remember when I passed on at 8 my mom bought me camera. Amazing. I didn't think like I would take uh, photography as a business. Yeah. But uh, I chose the wrong career. Yeah. <laughs> I, I went to art school. Uh -huh. So when I'm, I was at high school then um uh, my sister passed away. Oh, wow. So after she passed away, then uh, my mom lost a job. Mm. So many, like now I have to drop out and uh, go mm. back to mm. like face the poverty mm. again. And uh, then. Um, so you have to start again, basically. Like, I think. God was like I think my life was <laughs> hand stitched. <laughs> yeah, by God, because like mm. when I check like now, because uh, my mom bought me a camera, I didn't want to take that. I didn't think like I would make a living through photography. Mm. But when my mom lost a job and I was forced to go to you Bulugu, had no choice. And, uh, then I met uh, my man to throw a friend, mm -hmm. uh, Bratom Koza. Mm. He is the one who taught me how to hustle. Like amazing. When we went to his shop, like he used to own a photo lab. Mm. So like where you develop the film and the print before the digital era. Yeah. So like when I told Bratom, it's like, no, I used to be cameraman. Back in the days, mm. we used to say cameraman. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. It's like, so then why did you quit? It's like, oh, no, can I make a living out of this? Then Bratom arrived, man. Mm. Like, uh, to be honest, um, <laughs> he told me how to hustle and everything. Like, he mentored me on that field, like a uh, photography business. Yeah. Then he got a contract to, like, he used to do city press covers, uh, city pass, mm. where you do celebrities, like uh, your cabellos will come there, mm. all the so-called celebrities will come there and mm. uh, develop the feeling. Yeah, so uh, he will do the cover. So at that time, I will be set up in the, the studio. Yeah. I was kind his of assistant. learning everything. He was his yes. assistant. So, I mean, you wanted to be in the entertainment industry, but yeah. he showed you that actually um, there's a different side. So when yeah. he did all the serious things mm. and the, the, the squatter camps and the political things, mm. it taught you how to kind of be fit yourself anyway, which helped you do your entertainment work. Is that not so? Yes, uh, and I think the other thing that helped me, it was when I was at the art school. Yeah. Uh, I was studying music, mm -hmm. so we had a music, uh, sorry, music business mm -hmm. as a course. Mm -hmm. So like that's where like they were telling us like, you know what, uh, it doesn't like it doesn't matter. Like you don't have to be the front man. Mm -hmm. You can make a lot of money being behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Like you can write songs or you can be a photographer. So like when I met Tom, like the elements that I learned when I was uh, at school they and, helped uh, you. Yeah. and the history hustle yeah. when I combined them. That they came when, together. Yeah. 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 So it's it's kind of like all of these teachers you had, um, uh, Upratom, even the school itself. Mm. They kind of they kind of shaped everything that you're known for now, and that's I guess figuring out that you know the money, the the, the value rather, is not really in front of what we see. There's also a lot of value behind the scenes, right? Yes. Which is what you've you've built your 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 career on, you know. Mm. So I mean, where? How does that? How do we go from there to Oparazzi? 
my biggest play came uh, the summer. I think it was summer 2002. Mm. I get crushed in the summer, so I went there early. You get crushed the summers? Yeah. 2002, why? You wanted to be... I didn't have the pass. The pass, ne? I was not known that time. So you made your own pass, basically. It's a great thing. <laughs> you know what I did? Like I went hustling. there. Hustling. Yeah, I went this there early. This is a hustling. This is what it's like. I know they started six o'clock. Mm. So if I go there six o'clock, it's mm. gonna be packed and no one's gonna listen to me. Mm. I went there early, my camera out. Then I just went there with confidence, like ah. To the guest list, uh, my name is Oba Oba. They check the check. It's like, I know, your name is not here. It's like, mm. uh, okay, no, it's fine. So there was this lady, the PR lady, mm -hmm. she was Indian. <laughs> it's like, no, you didn't get your tech, where you live? It's like, but they say, my name is not on the guest list. Just... It's like, oh, okay. Guys, but you see, this guy's got me here to work. So why? Give him a tech. Yeah. Then I went there inside. Uh, I did my things. Then I checked, oh, City Press is not here. Sunday sign is not here. Mm. Oh, it was the night Zola won the uh, Mudrembe. Mm. Yeah, as a song of the year. Song of the year from yeah. Grem, yeah. yeah. The following day, I, call, I got the home advantage because I went the lab. <laughs> I was living, <laughs> I was staying at the lab. Like, uh -huh. I'm, I'm in charge of the uh, machine processing and everything. I called daily, uh, sorry, Sunday sign and City Press. Hey, welcome, Scott Sun. It's Opa, I'm fit. Keep up, papi, boss. You know, the picture said, it's like, I'm a man, Romel. Then Zakhel is she was at Sunday Sun. Mm. I called Zakhel, hey Zakhel, no sinner photograph. It's like I know Romel. Mm. So that time Tom, that's like serious. Sunday, what we did at the lab, like mm. I would take mine from the till, then uh -huh. go buy newspapers. Uh -huh. And I show him like that's when I get so often it's like I know when I it's like born. Handy Sunday papers. It was Sun, my a city press Sunday Sun. Amazing. It's like born. Yeah. Then all of a sudden it's like, hey, Magita. But how many scores they were? I don't have to send pictures. It's like, I know three years. Hey, what? Don't you want to for how long? I know. I'm a figure zone. I'm a check a span. At that time, I brought up like, I'm a proud to get nothing. That's amazing. So you're saying that once that happened, mm. Tom, all of a sudden now, mm. you could feel that he was proud of you. What did that mean for you? Because this is someone who you grew up admiring and who basically brought you into the industry. Yeah, for that time, like it was. That's when I realized, like you know, when you go, like he was a father to me. Mm. Tom was my adopted father. Mm. So like sometimes when you got, uh, you got a child, working on a long one, on a long one, like when you go to soccer player, and when it's like no, Iba, mm. <laughs> Iba something. So like but I get, mm. eh, so I get check, like the way now grooma kahona. Obviously, never wanted something out of me, mm. but yeah, now I thought I will follow his footsteps, mm. follow the working politics and um, documentary photography. Mm. Whereas now I just I wanted to be entertainment in, into the entertainment. But back then, there was no opportunities to entertainment because mm. like you got a, a gallo images, which is bigger sports. Yeah. And when we check out entertainment, there's no one who's documenting uh, sport, uh, sorry, music. Music. So like the time when I went to TV, the summers film. and uh, I got Zola with my daughter posing with the hours. That's why I saw the each moment, like, you know what? This picture in 20 years time is mm. going to worth a lot of money. So here you are at the summers mm. and you take this iconic picture with Uzola Nomandos. Um, so what does that do? Because you look at this image and what happens to you? Just put a smile on my face, like, you know yeah. what? Zola so was still new in the industry. Mm. And uh, Mendoza, like, I grew up listening to Mendoza Chisco. So mm. like, now when they crown Zola as the king of white, it was like, you know what? Oh, but there are no opportunities, like, where they document the entertainment, entertainment guy. Yeah. So like, you know what? Wake up. Mm. Uh, you have to invest for the future. Mm, I love so, that. So, just follow Zola around mm. and uh, all these guys. Because, mm. like, in about 10 years' time, your pictures will go on. Will live on forever. Yeah, yeah. And tell a lot of stories. What do you think um, has been the number one thing that has set you apart from, from if you could think of, like, the, you know, people who, who do the same type of work that you do in South Africa? What is that thing that, that you think has set you apart? I think uh, from day one, I never wanted to work for anyone, mm. for any orga organization. Because mm. when we work for a certain company, you are limited and you relax. Mm. Like we say, like, I know, I know only 25 
I'm getting paid. Check, yeah. And when you get retrenched, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. So like from day one, when I get crushed, after I get crushed in the summers, mm -hmm. it was like, you know what, I have to do a lot of uh, content. Yeah. And just keep it safe. Yeah. When I go to the events, mm. it's not. I'm, I don't want to make money that time. To be honest, mm. sometimes I just go there, just to take, just to document the the, the event. So, so you're, never, you're not driven by money, right? No, like uh, you know, you know, what, like if you run after money, that's when you lose everything. Because mm. obviously they're gonna call you over. Go do the summers. Mm. You go to the summers. They pay you uh, two thousand. Mm. Then you're working for a big organization. Mm. They own the copyright of the work. For example, uh, okay, you're from the summers. Yeah. Then after, you got that picture maybe of uh, Java in the summers. Mm. Something happens to Java. Mm. The company's going to make a lot of money mm, out of, of, uh, of your work. Of your work. Yeah. And that time when you get it, nothing. Exactly. So I think for me, it was always like thinking for the future. Mm. Um, what does your career look like now? Like, what do you what do you focus on now? Because now every photographer is about the Instagram page, and that's the portfolio, and and I think you're still kind of old school in that respect, you know. For me, Instagram like it's like uh, having monopoly money. It's like having monopoly money. Yeah. Yo. Because like you post the pictures, someone uh, why re okay why retweet, and you're not even getting paid. Jeez. Then when I like the likes, I know I've got 10,000 likes. <laughs> but what does that quantify to? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that speaks to value. Do you think people have lost the value in, in or understanding where the real value is in, in the work that they do, especially when it comes to images? Do you think so? What I've realized, a lot of guys, they don't uh, understand the copyright. Mm. Yeah. The basics of copyright. Yes. Yeah. Mm and the value that it creates for you, no? Yeah, because like, uh, as I said, like you put a picture on Instagram, mm. uh, like your media houses, the drum, whatever, mm. print, mm. online, they use your, your work. Mm. You're not even getting paid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, my, that's my problem. But immediately you understand the copyright. Yeah. So when my picture is used, mm. I have to be paid. Mm. Pretty doesn't time. pay the bill because, like, most of the time they will call you, like, hey, Opa, come to as an invite. You mm. go to the uh, whatever event is happening. Mm. They will be calling, hey, Opa, so our photographer disappointed us. Mm. Like, we got shit pictures, and uh, so can you. Can you help us? Can you. Then, how much are you paying me? It's like, I know, but we'll credit you. A, but, cre a credit doesn't pay the bills. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I often wonder how many pictures you have that you've never released that would either <laughs> make someone's career or destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot. <laughs> but by the way, I'm not negative. Yeah. So yeah. I want to release some... Things that would put people in a negative light. Ne? Why should I destroy you? Okay. Mm. For now, like uh, maybe whatever. Send the world, they want your picture getting drunk, or maybe, I don't know. Mm. I give them, they pay me 10,000. Mm. Then you started at the bar mm. as your company. Mm. And the only person you want to work is Oprah. But when someone's like, ah, but why is Oprah? It's like, I know. Mm. I can't work with Oprah. That guy's cruel. Mm. So sometimes, like, man, you have to think about the future. Yeah. Yeah, as I said, like my mentor's like, because exactly. like you're gonna get ten thousand. What are you gonna do with ten thousand? Exactly, that money is gonna finish. Yeah. So talking about the future, I think what's what's in store for you? Are you planning different things? Are you are you still trying to do what you've been doing all along, or what's what are your plans for the future? I'm still doing what I'm doing. I've been doing. Mm -hmm. Enjoying it. I'm still enjoying it, but. Uh, the past four years mm -hmm. was bad because mm. of the industry change, mm. social media, a lot of companies mm. closing down yeah. the print media. Yeah, traditional print. Yeah, traditional yeah. print. Yeah. So I think I was fortunate enough because, like, I invested in the future. So everyone mm. like knows 
Uber owns entertainment. Basically. Yeah, so like uh, the company that I wanted to work with like some years back. Yeah. They approached me like, hey, Uber, you know what? When I work with you. Incredible. So for now, I'm working with the Galo Getty Images. Mm -hmm. Um, with the uh, entertainment content. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's amazing because I think I think with your career everything has come full circle. Mm. So, like the company that you mentioned that you always wanted to work with, and then this original passion you had in entertainment, now it's come full circle. Mm. Now they want to work with you mm. at a time in the industry that's obsessed with monopoly money, mm. but you're still getting the return on your long-term investment, you know? Yeah. I think that's an incredible story for a career, you know? Yeah. That for me is the type of career legacy that raises the bar. So thank you so much. <laughs>